Why do I make it so hard for myself? Why like, don't? it's all working good with the other mics and sitting down, and I feel like we have to amp up the difficulty again. Yeah. Um, That's the so. only way that we operate here. It's There's true. There's a good side to that and a bad side to yeah. that. And the good side, of course, is the uh, creativity that we put into everything, the passion we put into everything, and it's the. Customization we put into everything, every client, every piece of work that we do, and the part, the bad part is, you know, that uh, I don't know. Maybe we have a little bit of Americanism, workaholism in us, or something. Maybe you know? it's not good. I don't know. I like to say that I love what I'm, I do, I'm, I'm, so I'm that's happy, why. But it's not, it's not good. Yeah. Every um, day, working your passion. There's a bit of buzz in the background. Hmm. I wonder if it's because these things are plugged in. Perhaps we should switch back to the other mics. We can do that. We can switch yeah, back to I mean, we mics. have the power. Yeah. We are the, we are no, no. the engineers, the sound engineers. Right. All right, let's do that. So let's just switch back to the other mics for if okay. anybody's watching us right now. All right, we need the, we'll need the uh, chairs. One moment, please. All right. It was, it was a nice thought. It was a nice thought. Yeah, we got that. Uh, I won't tell you where my, uh, where my mic pack is clipped. In this dress, <laughs> we'll just leave that for the imagination. All right, let's do. It was it was a nice it was a nice thought. It was really a nice thought that we were going to be able to do that. But I was rolling a vet's chair back in there. So uh huh. What did you? Why did you have to qualify that? I don't know because I was off camera for a minute. We were live. Oh. It's like you're. It's like uh, Regis left the camera. Or something. Hey, if if a. Uh, if a tree falls in the forest yeah. and there's no one there to hear it, then you weren't off does camera. Does it make a noise? It turns out you weren't off camera. It's after if all, you so. go out of camera on a live with no attendees, <laughs> did you go off the camera? Don't be bitter. Don't be bitter. <laughs> did you? Did you now? Um, no, I was thinking. I was thinking this morning. I was thinking this morning uh, about the cool kids. And Angela, you'll let us know if maybe the sound is better. I hope. Uh, I was thinking this morning about the cool kids. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll also unplug this so that there's no. How's that? Perfect. All righty. They sounded more echoey anyway. Ugh. We want to be free from the chairs, Tanya. Yeah. But this is the. the <laughs> Chop liver. No, Tanya. You, we live for you. We live for you. Tanya's offended because I was like, if no one is there to see it. <laughs> that was offensive. But I was thinking, Tanya, how can we make these live streams like more dynamic? Because, you know, the kids these days, they sit there and they'll play video games on the live stream and they have like so many people. So we need to up our game. Like we can still talk about foresight, but I need you to like maybe maybe cook something while we're talking about oh, foresight. That would, <clears throat> that would be cool. You could be the chef, the chef futurist or yes, something. Yeah, I could cook food. From the future. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm we not, might be on to something. I mean, f the I, Food I, I, Channel okay, here's has the, all these weird food shows, no, 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 so no, no, why no. not Food from the Future? I, you know, here's the, that's an interesting litmus test. You say Food from the Future, I think astronaut ice cream. Yes. I, when what I, other? <clears throat> what are? What's the other food from the future that you think of? I I mean, there would be something. We would we would make it up as we no, go along. No, but like that average person, if you went and you were yeah. like, sir. If I say food from the future, what comes to mind? A pill. Ah, uh, yes. No, a replicator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so so that, maybe we'd have that. That wouldn't be a very good live stream. I, I need you to be like, <laughs> I need you to be in the garden picking the tomatoes. Like, is it Uma Garten? What's her name? Uma, um, I don't know. I just know. Ida, Ida, Ida. Ida Garten. Gar yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Huge following. Yeah. I feel like it's like. Natural foresight in a natural environment with natural, f no? I don't know. I like it. Just thinking. Natural, Just the Mediterranean thinking. foresight show. Ah, oh, like, like olive a, the oils. the Mediterranean diet and stuff. Tang, yeah. see, Tang is another one. Tang is another futuristic, futuristic food. Tang is, I was going to say. Is that another astronaut one? Ina, Ina, she's like, five, Tang is like, and by the way, as the third host here, it's Ina <laughs> Can we get her on? We have to figure out how to like show, how to actually show. like bring her in. That'll be the next thing. I think we have to do that on Instagram. She, Tanya's like the um, 
you know, the really important person that stands off to the side, but they zoom in once in a while and corrects you and the gives producer. you the reference. She's the producer. She's the producer. The producer of the show. Remember Regis and Kathy and uh, – and Yeah, who they, did they have? Who did they have? I don't know. But. No, yeah, he would talk about them all the time. Tanya will tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wish there wasn't a delay because it would be even better. What we need to get is Tanya on our Slack channel. Yeah. And then real time, Philbin. Uh, no, that's Regis Philbin. Yeah. And. Philbin. Regis Philbin. <laughs> Philman. Philman. Rest his soul. R.I.P. In some ways. Sad. Yeah. No, sad for him a... because you know why I'm sad for him? This is such a scattered opening. It's a great opening, uh, actually. Um, Gelman. Gelman? <laughs> Tanya! You're yes! good. Yes! You are good. We need Tanya on our Slack. <laughs> Y'all aren't funny. <laughs> what? Yes, we are. Yes, we are, Tanya. As our only I'm not viewer, sure that meant, but yes, you we need are, to so. not. No. Um, <laughs> no. I was, I, look, say what you will about Reach. Yeah. But I thought it was super sad that he, I mean, a lot of people unfortunately passed away during the pandemic. Yes. He was one. I don't think he had COVID, but he passed away during that time period, yeah, you know? Right. And as a result, there was like no service. I mean, this is a man that would have had oh, know, like a parade in his honor. Nobody knew that he died, yeah. I know. Wasn't Gosh. Really, yeah, yeah. So many ramifications. Anywho. Anywho, I have on my, uh, my library, sh support your local library shirt today. Um, I have another shirt that I bought at the same time that said, ban the fascists and yes. support the library. Yes. Um, but, uh, that, but we've been doing several years of work with libraries across the United States now yes. uh, from a grant from the IMLS and the uh, Laura Bush Foundation for American Libraries. So. That's why I have my library show. Oh, you're, today. are we doing like a show and tell? I thought it was related to Regis. People or are going to want to know what, okay. sh Frank, what's that shirt? We'll on link and it. How do I buy one? Yeah, we'll link it in our bio. And how do I purchase If one? we're going to talk fashion, we could talk about the fact that I am wearing my shoulder free outfit, which I again, I get to take some fashion risks on the live stream. Like, I could not wear this to a client because. Yeah, no. why, why? Okay, you were quick to say no. No, but I. Please but say yeah. more. Say more. You know how corporate America is. They would be like, well, we're not going to hire you again and all that nonsense, of course. I don't I'm agree also, with it. But I don't agree with it. No, no, no. I'm less worried about the corporate, to be honest. And I'm more worried culturally Yeah. how, oh, okay. you know, like, it's interesting. But, um, but yeah, I like I like the live stream because it's a little bit more, you know, sort Laid of back relaxed. back and we can talk about what we want to. See. Relaxed. Um. <laughs> I'm with the band. I like that, too. Get it? I'm with the yeah. band. Like, I saw – that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm with the get band. It, get it's it. It's really get awesome. It, get it? Um, I saw another shirt, too, that said, like, um, tell me one time in history when the good guys were banning the books. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's good. so true. I mean, we could talk about book bans. We're going to talk about uh, – It was in one of the – podcast as yes. we've been going through yes. the inner development goals we actually talked about yes. for the example book banning. I think it was back in our first <laughs> dimension, but yeah. <laughs> it is Florida. I need to work my whole Carmen Miranda. Uh, I am I am in the outfit of my people, the Cuban people. They believe in, you know, having a little bit uh, more freedom. Cool. Uh, yeah, we're working our way through the inner, inner development goals framework. Truth be told... We've gotten a little bit behind on the actual recordings. By one week, it's not terrible. Look, everybody just stop terrible. sending us emails. All right? We'll get to it when we get to it. Don't you wish. Don't you wish. Yeah, well, actually, I do wish. <laughs> Send me an email. Tell me where's the podcast so I know you're out there. Is this thing on? So, but what, you know, we had scheduled the live stream. So we're here. And it's okay. It, every, it, you know, the earth will continue to rotate on its axes. And I love doing these, so I definitely didn't want to postpone it. And uh, this is the fourth of five dimensions. Dimensions in the inner development goals. Right. So this is the yep. dimension of collaborating, which they say social skills is the bucket here. Yes. And um, so we're going to talk about, we're going to set this up in advance of uh, those podcasts getting recorded. Yes. Getting recorded and dropped. So we do a live stream before each sort of dimension. 
you know, I was going to just say quickly that, and this dimension is they're all interesting in their own way. Mm -hmm. They all are important in their own way. That's why there's five of them that are together and that they made them because <laughs> they are, are important. <laughs> um, I hope that made sense. It did. Um, but this one's uh, sort of um, unique flavor uh, really points to the need for us as a society to collaborate for better futures. Obviously, it's called collaboration. And what I really want to say is it ties in beautifully to the fact that our next um, training uh, for our, found, our flagship program, Foundations and Natural Foresight, is going to be focused on the project issue of the future of democracy. Right. So we are beta testing a new approach to our foundations programs. Um, and if you're not familiar, that's our, as Frank said, our flagship program, our three-day program that we offer live online. I say three-day. It's really six modules. It could be across three days or sometimes it's across six days. True. Sometimes we're doing it overnight. Sometimes right. it's, you know, whatever. Um, but it's six modules. It covers the natural foresight framework. It builds scenarios. Um, it's very hands-on. Uh, and in the past, we've had, um, you know, a, a focal issue for like an entire season or an entire year. And um, we're just sort of like, you know, the world has such pressing problems. We need all hands on deck. And because our training programs are so applied and they do result not only in learning and development, but also work product, we are going to start rotating our focal issues to be, you know, timely with issues that we're seeing in the world. And the good news is there's not a shortage of issues that can use foresight. So for our August program, and I have I have a little visual here, we'll, we'll bookend this, we'll talk again at the end, but just in case uh, folks don't stay till the end, um, that's not what I wanted, this is what I want. Um, the Future of Democracy Foundations program will run August 22nd through the 24th. It is three full days, mountain time. Um, and uh, we're going to curate a group of leaders mm. uh, that maybe are in this space, maybe they're subject matter experts in democracy, maybe they're just brilliant thought leaders. And we're going to equip them and give them the tools and methods, and we're going to let them run with it and produce work product around the future of democracy. And we wanted to mention it not because, not only because it's timely in case anybody wants to join us, there's still time to apply and join us for that program, but also because as you said, very much related to the IDG domain of collaborating. Um, when you look at the particular traits, which I'll just share really quickly, the skills that they list under collaborating are communication skills, co-creation skills, mm. inclusive mindset and intercultural competence, and trust, and then mobilization skills. Yeah. So organically, very emergent of us, we were chatting in the pre-show about this particular episode of the live stream, and we were like, wow, these traits, these skills really speak to what we need right. for a healthy democracy. Uh, uh, absolutely. So beautiful sort of yep. segue and dovetail to be able to talk about not just these skills individually, and, and I know we want to talk about your recent um, Medium yeah. blog post, yeah. um, but just in terms of like, why do we care? Like, even if you don't care about, God forbid, you don't care about the SDGs, right? If you don't care about the sustainable development goals, if you don't care about unlocking your inner futurist, mm. I think most people would say, regardless of where they fall in the political spectrum, I care about the future of democracy. And if you do, then we need to talk about these skills and we need to talk about these mindsets and these perspectives and we need to figure out how to cultivate these in our society. Yeah, exactly. As a matter of fact, um, we have an interview coming up in the next week, um, and it'll probably be published all over social media within a week of that, so maybe in the next two weeks, uh, with uh, Suzette Brooks Masters, who um, is an expert on the future of democracy now. And uh, um, she recently published a paper with the UN and uh, several other organizations about the future of democracy and where it's headed and what that might mean. She did interviews with tons of 
other people in the field, outside the field of foresight, inside the field of foresight, um, to uh, curate this 70-page report um, that is well documented on the future of democracy and has been circulated now across um, all kinds of nonprofits. Uh, one of them is the New Pluralists organization, and some of the individuals from New Pluralists will be attending that August uh, training, as well as um, an individual or two from the Aerospace Corporation and different, you know, it's like a mixed bag, but, di- but people who care about democracy. Yeah, yeah. Here's the deal. Reasons. If you, if you, even if you've been to a foundation before, it yeah. will not, it, this will be a whole different experience. Yeah. Um, we always gather really brilliant people at our cohorts. Um, this time around, though, I think it's like a whole nother level because right. yeah, it is. Um, yeah. it's a combination of sort of hand selected individuals, individuals that are called sort of be- have a calling specifically for this um, focal issue. And um, and it's it's going to be really, really powerful. Yeah. And if you, you know, at, at all are interested in this topic, I mean, look out for the work product that comes out of it. But also it. but yeah. also join us join us to not only a- be able to practice your foresight skills but be able to apply it to such a critical issue such a critical issue and you make a good point you already said this but just to clarify again we are we're curating some of the cohort but it's still open to people applying just because they want to learn foresight tools and methodologies and they want to they're going to be doing co-create. it in a really cool cohort they, or they want to co-create yeah the they want to co-create the future of democracy right. you know like applied foresight with a you know mission critical issue alongside you know we always have brilliant again we always have brilliant people in our cohorts um, this one is going to be like for us, maybe a little intimidating. The folks that we have in the room um, that are doing amazing work in this space or in adjacent spaces, or as we said, are just foresight practitioners that, um, you know, they've been around the block. They, you know, they have their own practice, whether they're internal or not. And, um, and they're looking to apply the skills to a big issue like this, something that they feel is important. I think that's the bottom line. Like, right. So even if you work in a corporation like I did at Disney doing foresight, I mean, I know how it is. Like, It's great to do foresight. Sometimes it can be a little sort of demoralizing when you're looking to do foresight to sell more X or Y. So if you're looking for an outlet for your foresight practice to build more of the capacity but apply it to a real world wicked problem issue that is going to have huge implications to us all uh not just in the u.s but across the globe then i hope you join us yeah well tanya just said the same thing that uh different it, types of democracies and so we'll get a chance to talk about yes. that as a matter of fact one of the things that Suzette covered very well in the paper and i was last night talking to Stuart candy um who, name drop let me just pick uh, let, oh you just drop you just dropped that. Here you, you go. Thank you. Thank you. you. Let me put that back that. in my pocket again. Mm-hmm. Stuart Candy. It's like a piece of candy. <laughs> is it sweet? He's like a delicious piece of candy, Stuart. Oh, my God. What I'll is... Be here. I'm sending this this recording straight to Parsons so that he can watch it. <laughs> this... Stuart, you're like a delicious piece of candy. We are now pandering. This is where we've reached. We're not We're not going to do chefs I had written... of the future. Yeah. We're just right, right, going right, to, right, like, right, right. we're going to call out. You just say names. It's like, and yeah. then so hell wrote me the other day. <laughs> And Obama's foundation. Obama? Was, yeah, that we, we got this close to doing so foresight work close. for the Obama Foundation. It didn't happen. That is a wild story with several parts. Yeah, that's a good story. For another day. For another day. Um, he, uh, 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 I think it was about a year ago, like a piece of took a sabbatical. <laughs> I'm He's getting this. I'm sorry. He took a sabbatical okay, about a year sorry. ago, and there was, and he was transitioning from Carnegie Mellon, where mm. he was teaching, That's to right. the new school where he now teaches foresight at in Parsons in New York City, and um, and of course Stewart's, you know, one of the premier futures for design fiction. Yes, uh, that's really his. Um, Lane's his jam his foray. Um, I mean, he's a broad futurist, but that's where he's chosen to sort of focus on. Yeah. And. Um, but they, but they did a uh, – USC did a uh, um, a Future of Democracy cohort, and Stewart was chosen to be a part of that. He also is like the future in residence for the um, Jet Propulsion Laboratories. Does NASA. the man sleep? I know. Golly. 
I Leave mean, something for the rest of us to do, Candy. Or, or Stuart, you just got a bunch of cool titles, but you don't really do any of that stuff. That's the secret, buddy. He's on a beach I'm somewhere. I'm just kidding. I know he does. No, he, um, he had time to talk to you, though. That's nice. Well, he wrote me back. He, <laughs> I wrote him when we first had this oh, project right, going. Right, right, right. It's been a little while. He's like, sorry, I was traveling to Istanbul or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I want him to hear this. Sometime. Jeez. Yeah. I'm playing. And, uh, and, uh. And so, yeah, hopefully some of those guys can be involved as well. I before we went uh, before we went on switching gears a little bit now, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we are gonna have to get into the actual. You think? Yeah. I don't know. This is, I think, what people come from. I, for. I, I think so too. Um, I would love if Angela can find this. It shouldn't be too hard on our Medium page, the TFSX Medium page. Just yesterday, we published a new article called "Embodying a Future That's Alive." And the word alive is all in caps. You want to guess why? Are you suggesting that the foresight field needs another acronym, sir? Yes. Or acrostic. <laughs> that's, that's a word for a wordle. wordle. Although it would it's be like long. a eight letter. It's so, a wordle eight. Yeah. Uh, Angel, it's also, he posted on his LinkedIn. Yeah, but if you just go to the TFSX, or for whoever's listening, if you go to the TFSX <laughs> guide Medium them page, just guide them through um, it. you will be able to find our new article, Embodying a Future That's Alive. And I think it ties in. The reason I mention it is because we already got a lot of good play about this and people were reposting yesterday and they're excited about it because and now here comes the part where you and I don't mind being controversial and this is the show mm -hmm. if you want to hear us, you know, spill the tea and do all the stuff and say whatever we want to, right? So this article does the same thing. It basically says like, look, VUCA, V-U-C-A, that acronym that stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. And then you've got tuna because VUCA wasn't good enough. So somebody had to make a tuna sandwich or a tuna sub and it's turbulent, uncertain, which is the same as VUCA. Complex, which is the same as VUCA, and ambiguous. Which no, is that's Tuca. Tuna. No, you're right. Novel. Tuca is good. I like Toucan. <laughs> Can we make something out of that? Um, novel and ambiguous. And then, if that weren't enough, we have Banny, B-A-N-I, which is brittle, anxious, uh, nonlinear, and an I that stands for something scary. And I can't remember what it is. <laughs> but there are four scary words. <laughs> and um, I, I was heartened to see the response to this article so far. It's only been out for 24 hours that a lot of people were saying um, that they don't like any of those acronyms because they're all fear-based. And they're all an indication. All they really speak to is our reactive response to a world that we realize we no longer have control over, and we never did. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, no, what do you mean? I don't have control over this. I feel so VUCA. I feel so tuna. Or, you know, Banny actually is less about the actual characteristics and more about the response of, like, I'm brittle. I'm anxious. I'm nonlinear. I'm a Novel. The I, yeah, the I is. I always forget what the I is. Oh, nonlinear is N. Nonlinear. I thought it was novel. No, it's nonlinear. Oh, that's tuna. Tuna is nonlinear. So confused. This alphabet soup. It's alphabet soup. Has me going a little crazy. Um, but alive, the acronym alive, those are close ended acronyms. We don't need an acronym, I agree. Um, but since those acronyms do exist, <laughs> since they do already exist, and people gobble up those acronyms because people love a good acronym. <laughs> I like toucan, Angela. That's good. Um, too cute. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna that would be have been cuter, turbulent, actually. Turbulent, uncertain, <laughs> complex, ambiguous, and novel. Well, there you go. Yeah, toucan. That's the next article. Or can we have a toucan, toucan vanny sandwich? <laughs> Somebody had written that, too. Um, it's the number three role at Five Guys or whatever. <laughs> Some of the, one of those restaurants. Anyway, Alive, Alive is more of a... <laughs> Benny is my mom. my mom. Brittle and anxious and very nonlinear. And oh my God. Oh I know. my God. I spent this past weekend. It's my mom too. With my mom. First that is so interesting. That's pandemic. how we should have opened the show. Yeah. Because we know your mom's not listening to this. I, so you I, I went really back to my city tea. of my birth where she still lives and I visited. And uh, that's a whole episode. I feel by full itself. now. I feel awful. 
I feel the no need to. I will I tell full. you that Frank wanted to get out of there so bad that he literally risked a plane crash mm -hmm. in literally. wind shear. Literally. And slept at the like, airport. I was like, get on it. He's like, get on it. You're He risk. started like, walking from Atlanta. Basically. Um, so like, basically, that's, that's true. Anyway. This is not, where's the lie? Where's the line in this story? Where's the line? Say less. Say less. Say less, as Sus. the kids say. <laughs> Jeez. We're just, I mean, I, the, the desperation is palpable, people. I am throwing away, levels, and yeah. I'm also throwing away all my skinny jeans. That's it, people, because the that's what, that's out. It's out. I mean, I, I, of course, skinny jeans were out when they came in, weren't they? Okay, anyway. High-rise jeans. Alive anyway. stands for abductive. I'll clear that up in a second. I'm not going to go deep on each one of these because I want you to read the article, but I'll just skim over. Abductive. Ab, ab, abductive, abductive, abductive. Not adductive, abductive, if you haven't heard the word before. We have smart listeners. I'm sure they all have. Um, liminal, interconnected, vibrant, and emerging. So these five words, again, like I said, I realize we don't need another acronym, but since we do have all these acronyms, this is a counter acronym so that people can say like, wait, if I love acronyms so much, I got one for you. And now it opens the door to, to, to go to a lot of new places. Have you ever seen the um, Dr. Seuss book on Beyond Zebra? Yes. Yes. We have, a, we have an article about it. So yes, I have seen it. That's right. Yeah, a trend mm -hmm. article, right? You wanted it called On Beyond Zebra or something like that. But they wouldn't let and me. And they wouldn't let Fast me. Company Fast wouldn't let Company wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let, let me do it. Um, anyway, now I am doing it because <laughs> On Beyond Zebra is um, a cute little book about one Dr. kid. Dr. Seuss, right? Yeah, Dr. Seuss, one kid. He's all like, you know stayed and perfect with his little tie on and he writes the alphabet up on the board and then there's this other wild kid with crazy hair and stuff and he's like ah on beyond your alphabet because there's a new alphabet he starts writing crazy words beyond z on beyond z on beyond zebra um that's what alive is it's on beyond vuka on beyond tuna mm -hmm. on beyond dasher dancer prancer vixen <laughs> comet cubit donner and blitzen um and uh and it's, and it's a acronym, an acronym, that allows us to think about the positive way that we should respond in a paradigm shift that's much needed if we're going to survive the poly crisis. And this feeds right into our um, inner development goals because these are traits and skills that we need um, to develop inwardly instead of like hammering and tacking stuff on outwardly to actually overcome the real problems that we see today, such as environmental collapse and severe racism and inequities and homelessness and national breakdown and the, and the uh, brittleness of democracy and all of mm. those things, right? It really comes from shifting yeah. our paradigm to one that's abductive, liminal, interconnected, vibrant, which is the sacred and spiritual aspect of futures and foresight, and emergent. Stop trying to build the future and start aligning with what wants to emerge, right? And so I'll just go back to the abductive piece for a moment because I had somebody say to me, it's like, ooh, abductive, that sounds so myopic. And so I was like, wait a second, I think you're talking about inductive and deductive because those are logical rational, logical, I can figure this out. And abductive is all about not looking at the pieces broken down, but seeing larger patterns. And stop trying to break it down into its component pieces, but say like, look, I see this larger thing and it makes things contextual for me. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking contextually now. So abductive, we're looking contextually and we're, defi we're defining metaphors that help us to see that, you know, a forest or uh, 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 a, a, uh, a plain, you know, where we, where the deer and the antelope roam are all made up of the dying carcasses and the bugs and the, and the, the grass and the trees and everything. And if any of those components were missing, it wouldn't be a vista anymore. Mm -hmm. That's abductive thinking. Mm. Liminal thinking is that space in between transitions that you have to have because if we don't have a liminal space, that almost that season of like um, turning the lights out for a moment where you're like, wait a second, a lot of things that I thought were wrong and I'm switching my paradigm and I'm having a transformation. You won't transform if you don't have liminal spaces, that space in between. 
And so we have to go through liminal spaces and we need to really embrace where's my next liminal space because mm-hmm. if we don't, we won't think of new things, right? Yeah. Um, interconnected is ecosystems. We have to think as eco minds. Stop thinking about, you know, this issue and that issue and this trend and that trend in isolation. It's all interconnected. How do we think in an ecosystemic way, in a symbiotic way? Vibrancy is really cool um, because if you read this one in the article, you'll see that um, you'll love this. This past week, Two really famous philosophers who bet 25 years ago, and it's made the news. It's all over the news now. Um, Two famous philosophers who are big on consciousness. One said that we will be able in the next 25 years. So 25 years ago, what was it, 98? 1998. They made a bet. Okay. A case of the finest wine in the world. Okay. Um, And one philosopher said, I bet that in the next 25 years, which ended this past week, I think it was on Wednesday of this past week, that we will find out what consciousness is neurologically. We will pinpoint consciousness neurologically. Okay. And David Chalmers, who takes an opposite view of it, because he says that consciousness, wait for this, this is really cool. He says that consciousness doesn't come from inside of you or in your brain. Our brains are receivers that are picking up on the element of consciousness, which is a fundamental element of the universe. Mm-hmm. And he has, if you're, you're like, what? Go read David Chalmers. It's amazing. He explains it in very scientific terms that consciousness is actually like air, like you know, planets, like stardust. It's a fundamental uh, element of the universe, and our brains are picking up on it. It's actually an explanation of why if somebody has brain damage, that they're, you know, we're like, oh, they're not as conscious. No, their receiver isn't picking up on the consciousness as much, mm. right? It's really powerful. And so vibrancy is about picking up on the vibrations of the universe. And the more we're open to it, the more we'll pick up on these vibrations. And it's a spiritual and sacred element of futures. Foresight help, makes us better vibration seekers, better, better vibration openness vessels. Mm. And then emergent, I already explained, it's like really, you know, it's like what wants to emerge, what's trying to emerge, the elements, the preconditions before we see the trends and all of that. It's uh, Nora Bateson says, there's more possibilities in what's about to happen than what already happened. And if we attune to what's trying to happen, then the possibilities are endless. But if we focus on like, oh, let that trend or that thing, then we limit our possibilities. Alive, this is the new acronym that we really need. Not VUCA, not BANI, not TUNA. We need to be thinking about alive. And the cool thing about our acronym is that it's a meta uh, acrostic because alive is about being alive. And TUNA is not about eating TUNA. (laughs) (laughs) All righty. So it really feeds us right into the mm-hmm. inner development goals because, again, if we think this way, if we think the way the inner development goals are saying these traits and skills that are our inner futurist, um, then we will be able to really tap into better futures. We need to unlock our inner futurist before we rush headlong into trying to do futures work. There's a lot of people trying to do futures work who haven't thought about what it really means to be a futurist and to think like a futurist. I think that's a super important we point to be made. We could do 12 podcasts on that Just point on that alone. point. Just on that point. Um, yeah, I, there's definitely this symbiotic relationship between, um, all joking aside, with the acronyms. Oh, David think. Chalmers won the won the case of, okay. they didn't find it. Yeah. Yeah, because Chalmers was like, you're not going to find it. Yeah, yeah. Because that's not, you're looking in the wrong place. Yeah. And so he won a case of the finest wine. Thank you for closing out that story. I, I'm sorry. I'm sure. Like, was I the... did feel like we just filled in there because he would do that often. Like, I'm um, not finished with the story. Hold on, Kathy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or who was the second woman? Uh, Come on, Tanya. Lee. Hurry, 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 time. Regis, <laughs> Kathy Lee, and then uh, Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, Kelly. Kelly Rippa. Kelly Rippa. Um, no, I was going to say that all joking aside about the acronym thing is that um, – you know, the acronyms we align ourselves with, the acronyms that are popular are sort of a litmus test of like sort of the social mental condition that we're in, right? That would gravitate toward more negative reactionary yeah. acronyms, I think is suggestive of, yeah. the, of the systemic crisis we find ourselves in. Exactly. Um, and I, I, I love that you used the word reactionary because those 
those acronyms are a reaction to our extractive settler colonial right. Systems, right. and so the only way we know to react is like, oh, volatile, oh, uncertain. It's only uncertain because you're reacting to an extractive system. I think too, it's like it's something that's happening to me, uh, and uh, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't have control over it, and you know, yeah. so I have to get in a position of almost adversarial position, yeah, um, a risk minded position yes um, yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah. i think furthering that point too that there is a symbiotic relationship and so um say what you will about like oh we didn't need another acronym but i do think that um, there has to be a point of discussion or there should be a point of discussion about our relationship with our present our past and our future yeah and i think that simply staying out of the foray because we're like oh gosh we don't need another acronym yeah is um is not right either i think that we know that people need ways to grasp these ideas and acronyms are a way to create a common language right. and if we That's can all. popularize the idea that the future is not something to fear. It's something that's alive in within all of us, right? There's a lot of ways to think about that alive acronym. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's again, circling back to the IDGs. Um, the right. reason why we make such a strong connection, we feel so connected to the inner development goals is because we just firmly believe that the future is something that can be unlocked from within, mm -hmm. not downloaded into us necessarily. That's a powerful point. Uh, and I just wanted to like add to what you're saying and say that back to that ALIVE acronym for just a moment and we'll get onto the collaboration piece, abductive, liminal, interconnected, vibrant, and emergent. They're not things that we should feel. They are things that that's the way reality works. Yeah. The, the world, the universe actually is emergent. It actually is liminal. It actually is vibrant. It actually is abductive. Whether we like those things or not, that's how reality works. And if we don't align up with the cosmos, we'll be acting or thinking or, or embracing the paradigm of an abductive universe, a liminal universe, a vibrant universe, an interconnected universe, and an emergent universe, right? Yeah, I think, too, just this idea, there's just so many layers to it, right? So. Yeah. The universe is alive. Obviously, we're alive. The future is alive within all of us. It exists already. Um, and I think that the reason, again, why we get so excited is specifically natural foresight really leans into all of those elements. That's right. And That's right. And believes that complexity, not only is it here to stay, it's actually just an amazing quality that showcases the fact that we are actually evolving um i i sent you that clip um and mm. i know we'll probably talk about it in the empathy podcast yeah. that we're going to record but just this idea that if you're able to show empathy if you're able to display these skills which we are able to do these traits and these skills we are able to that's a sign of evolution that's a sign that we are progressing as a species and awesome. when and when you fall off from this yeah. it means that we're you know going backwards and so uh just a lot i think that gets interconnected here we don't we don't go into things lightly here yeah every i mean and when you're and when you create i think that's why we joke a lot because everything that we talk about is pretty deep you well, know that, it says a lot. that and i think too that um Look, when your DNA is DNA, like when you are, when you build a framework that is based on complex adaptive systems, that is based on nature and complexity, then you don't have to work as hard to make these connections because it's, it exists. This is why it's, it's born within this. It, it uh, is fueled by it. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I think, uh, Again, for far too long, we have, as a, as a society, embraced the mechanistic approaches. Um, and if we could just realize that it's not just about slapping foresight on top of these systems, That's friends. Right. It's not about, right. you know, I think we've gotten enough people now where they realize we're not trying to predict the future. At least they say they realize that. 
But look at how you act. If you're acting in a way where you're like, show me the data. If you're acting in a way where you're like, I'm going to help, you know, I'm going to make this plan faster, more efficient. I'm going to sell more of this using foresight. That's not foresight. It's really not because it's uh, insights, it's analytics, yeah. it's whatever you want to call it. It's finance, whatever. Yeah. Right. But don't please take take <laughs> take that name out of your mouth. Yeah. Like, like I just feel like and um and it's not for any reason. Like I, I, I we're not obviously trying to be gatekeepers here, but we I do believe that when terms like that are misused yes that that's a problem it's, like it's and when people problem. think foresight's about vuca and foresight's just about these mechanistic approaches or you know ways to do the five-year plan which you know we're all about you know adding this to your toolkit but it should as you and soha have said change your decision framework not just help you make the same decisions you've been making so um I was trying to remember his name because I wanted to say Ezra Klein, but that's, a, you know, a yeah. journalist, a yeah, famous yeah, yeah. journalist. It's Matt Klein. Uh -huh. He is the head of Foresight at Reddit. Okay. And he right now is with, it's it's basically one of those conferences. It's an invite only. You and I would never be there. It's like the marketing research mm -hmm. conference because they only want corporate yeah, practitioners yeah, yeah. at the conference. A lot of conferences are like that. I don't really want to go to so that So it's corporate practitioners so speaking to other upset. corporate practitioners, <laughs> which is those. fine because they're learning from one another, yeah. but you, you been, and I are, been, aren't invited. So. I've been to those conferences. Yeah. I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Um, anyway, Ezra seems like, uh, Ezra, see, I just did it. Matt seems like a cool guy. I've never met him. Um, but uh, he, right now he's on his sort of message, because we all have a shtick, right? And it all depends on whether your shtick is really sticky yeah. and weird or if it's a good thing that you're saying for the moment, you know? And his recent shtick is um, abandon trends. And, uh, and when you hear him talk about it, it's pretty cool because he's like, trends really, and the more, the more corporatism latches onto foresight, which I believe corporate entities and organizations need foresight. Um, but, um, but the more they do, they try to co-opt it instead of saying like, wow, this is really changing the way we see the practice of organizationalism, right? Yeah. Um, and that's what you're suggesting. And, uh, Matt at Reddit has the, uh, intestinal fortitude <laughs> to say foresight should not be about trend hunting because the more we do it, the more myopic it gets. It's like, what's the trend of the season and the fad and all of this stuff? Yeah. And how do I silo this trend away and all this? And he said, and that's not what foresight's about. And that was the message he brought to the marketing research things guys the other day. And everybody was commenting on it. And I commented on it too and said, like, thank goodness somebody's saying this and, and, and this is not what foresight is. That's the co-opting of foresight. And I was pleasantly surprised to see people liking my comments comment because it gave me an adrenaline rush and <laughs> as all good social media you've been spending a lot do. of time on linkedin lately just i need me. likes i need likes and uh and and because you know it let me know that at least to some degree people were like this is not an off-putting message that you're saying that foresight is not insights it's not trend hunting i even said in the post i was like the reason this has happened matt is because insights and consumer insights and competitive intelligence co-opted foresight and um, there doesn't need to be a co-opting of foresight. We, foresight needs to be able to challenge those practices. Um, you know, uh, Mintzberg, Henry Mintzberg, the old strategy guru, would say all the time, he was considered one of the biggest strategy gurus in the world, and he hated strategy. He was like, strategy is suffocating, is isolating, um, and he called it unstrategy. What we need is like to be flexible and malleable and to flow with the flow. It's, it's emergence is what he was practicing. He was teaching emergence, practicing emergence. Um, so anyway, powerful, powerful stuff. And I do think that it lines up with the collaboration piece. And I love that we talked about the vibrancy because I really think to really institute these IDGs in our life are the futurist mindsets, so to speak. Um, it really is about tapping into all of these traits and skills, which are part of the universal construct. Mm. I mean, it, you use the word evolution. It's like, yeah, can yeah. we evolve into these ways of thinking? Okay. We, if we do, um, then the human species will be that keystone species, not capstone species, keystone species that um, is a shepherd of, of, of the things that we're around. You know? At our next episode, we'll color. But this time around, we're going to talk about evolution and the universe.
I mean, it's just... It is what it you is. Know. Uh, I love how the Inner Development Goals framework defines collaborating as social skills. Um, it says, to make progress on shared concerns, which is, of course, the whole goal of the IDGs. The IDGs were created um, in support of the Sustainable Development Goals. The idea here is that simply measuring our success from an output perspective on these metrics that the SDGs have laid out for us is not enough and isn't moving the needle. Uh, in fact, we need to develop these skills and these traits internally in order to see that external progress that is still being, you know, of course, tracked by the That's SDGs. Right. Yeah. So it says to make progress on shared concerns, we need to develop our abilities to include, hold space, and communicate with stakeholders that have different values, skills, and competency. Look, anyone can hold space and have communication with people that already think like them. Yes. That's, that, that's not it. Yes. Uh, I also posted on LinkedIn, not a whole blog article, but I did post today about one of our recipes uh, on my TFSX yes. that speaks specifically to this. How oh. do you, how do you, you know, create an opportunity to align with people that have despair worldviews. Because no two people have the same past or present, yeah. but we can co-create a common future. And so we love that Foresight provides us a platform on which to not only become aware of our assumptions and biases, but have an open perspective to hear others' ideas. And it's great that in the uh, the LMS at my.tfsx.com, yeah. we have all those recipes available to subscribers um, that uh, literally give foresight methodology recipes like, yeah. oh, I've got an afternoon and I want to build more collaboration with my team yeah. uh, through foresight lens and in foresight. And there's a recipe sitting right there for it. With tel templates. I mean, you can go it's from, amazing. I have a need, like I want to like, because we heard a lot from our clients. This is a thing, you know, we have huge political polarization across the globe and folks are trying to create a bridge. And so from the moment that you have that thought, to, it takes longer to book the conference room or to uh, send out the meeting request than it does to get set up for a workshop when you use the recipes off of the site. It tells you the three tools you should use, step-by-step -step instructions. Anywho, uh, I think the reason we're so excited about the tool element and the recipe element is because we firmly believe that the most important um, trait or skill of a futurist beyond being curious and all that is the ability to facilitate these conversations. Yeah, which is like the first skill set yeah. within this uh, yeah. communication, communication co yeah. skills. Yeah. I mean... And I think it's related to this idea of mobilization as well. The last one, yeah. Yeah, and even trust. Yeah. Like, I think that you have to create trust when you have these conversations. If people don't feel safe, yeah. um, then how are you going to bring them along? How are you going to Love that. create, you know, that common ground? So I, I, I just think that people don't realize. They think foresight and they think, oh, I'm going to build a new thing or I'm going to find the list of trends and they don't realize that talk about robots yeah here. yeah they don't realize that foresight as a team building tool as a diversity equity and inclusion yes. and belonging tool yes is among the most powerful oh that you God. will have because again no two people have the same past or the same present the only space we can really co-create is the future and that co-creation is a big part of the collaborating domain as well so i can't wait to talk about that during a future episode. I can uh, too, and I love how you tied all of these because originally I was really just looking at the communication <laughs> skills trait as the one about facilitation, yeah. but you were able to tie all five of these yeah. traits under this discipline or a domain of, yeah. uh, of collaboration into the facilitation skill. Uh, Sohail, in a tell of years ago, had said to me, he was like, you know, the role of the futurist in the room is not to be the smartest future-oriented person there mm -hmm. is to be the one who can colla uh, collaborate and facilitate the future. Because, and again, this goes back to the future's be future being inside of you. It's yeah. an inner development, unlocking your inner yeah. futurist. So Hill's like, it's my job to unlock your inner futurist, not to be the futurist in the room. And you don't need to 
let me relieve you of this idea that you need to be the smartest in the room about all the trends, about all the issues. You do not. That's you right. do not. That's right. The most important work we do is listening. The most important we work we do is challenging. Yeah. Uh, in a in again in a respectful way. The most important work we do is creating that built you know bridge of trust. Yes. Um, because again, circling all the way back to VUCA. And these other acronyms, the fact is that, you know, people tend to think the future is scary and change is scary, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you are facilitating the future, if you are facilitating conversations to make change, to get people, you know, aligned on future visions, then you need to make them help them feel safe. Yeah, absolutely. Especially, I think there's another skill here. Um, the intercultural competence. Because we talked a little bit about this big fat word of trans rationality. And somebody had said to me just yesterday, we've reached peak rationality, which uh, Michael Compton and myself have talked about for the past year and a half, what it means to reach peak rationality. And that really as, um, as um, Benita Roy says, you know, we need a trans rational viewpoint, which means being able to see different ways of knowing and house them all together and accept them and learn from them and move with them without yeah. co-opting them. It's hard. Yeah, that's Friends, hard. Friends, it's hard. That's hard. Like, that's hard. I, I, we're, I mean, let's just keep it real here. Yeah. Like, let's just keep it real, real. The reason <laughs> real why- Real reals. Real, real reals. <laughs> the reason why we, you know, one of the reasons why we love doing public facing programs like the Future of Democracy program that's coming up in August is that we are going to see people in the room that are likely politically leaning, you know, aligned with us most most often. Um, they are probably would consider themselves to be progressive. I think generally speaking, uh, folks that have joined the foresight field and are excited about foresight tools, generally speaking, I'm painting with a broad stroke here, but based on my 15 years of experience, this is what we found. And so those public facing programs, we love them because yeah. we know, but that's when right. we go in house, that's a different story. Yeah. And and so we know as practicing futurists, we're not just teaching this stuff, we practice it every day. Yeah. And so when we say these things, we're not just trying to be flippant of like multiple ways of knowing. It, it, it challenges all of yeah, it's us. It's a real thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, 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 you have to be a student a foresight. You can never That's right. truly be an expert because I think yeah. things are always changing and always uh, emerging and you have to, you know, sort of be ready for that and yeah. be okay with that. Yeah, and I that's that. hard. I love that. I love that. You said a lot of good things right there. We're going to take this entire hour and we're going to divide it into little five minute clips so that people can watch it. <laughs> um, I don't know who's going to do that. I thought we were going to go for another hour. Is that what you were no, saying? No, no, no. Okay. We're going That's to, good. We're going to divide it into little bite sized clips because we talked about a lot of different things and it would be great to, I was thinking during this, while this was going on, it'd be great to break this down into like, there was just this moment we talked about alive. There was yeah. this moment we talked about facilitation yeah. so people can sort of digest this. Um, but back to the collaborating piece and the facilitation piece again for just a moment, I think that that's where this really stands out and sort of links with the futurist mindset. And I know that over the next five weeks of podcast, um, we'll be able to, once we get the empathy one under our belt, <laughs> we'll be able to talk about, um, you know, how this is unlocking the facilitation traits and skills within a futurist. Because oftentimes when we say, how do you think like a futurist? It's like, I, you know, you've got to think about the long term and you've got to, you know, really be a pattern and sense maker. Those things are true, um, but you don't hear this one as much. You need to unlock your inner um, facilitator, joint facilitator mm -hmm. and listener yeah. and um connector and again you know, all yeah. of these are interrelated because you can't, lover you can't you, know? you can't do that if you're not humble you know that's if you right. don't check your of ego course, which we've course. talked about that's previously right. I, yeah. I again i just i i love the series because if you're looking to do some inner work and um you know use the tools of foresight which are great but really understand uh from a leadership but from a personal perspective what we should be working on on ourselves on our kids yes. on our on our you know family and our colleagues these are them like these are the 23 it, things this is it. like this you know is it. Uh, and and ask yourself when you go into something 
whatever it is when you're prioritizing, is it supporting these 23 things or is it working against it? That's you right. know, if it's working against it, I think that should be a criteria for maybe we shouldn't be doing that. You know, if it's competitive and not collaborative, should we be doing it? Is there a way Oof. to make it more collaborative? Ooh. That's a whole nother podcast. Too. It is a whole nother podcast because there's a lot of futures work. I've been guilty of it too, so I'll just point the finger at myself, that does not necessarily support these particular traits. And I think that's a powerful point because yeah. one of the things that's being said here in this entire series on the Wicked Opportunities podcast is that we can use futures in a extractive, settler, colonial kind of way. That's my three words I always use. Um, and that is very misanthropic um, and anti cosmological and non-biological, non-psychic, non-sacred, um, and in the service of hyper-consumption and extraction and monetization um, and just turning people into consumer robots um, and all that stuff that's bad. And um, that doesn't mean that the people working in companies and all that are bad. And we love working with those people because the people we work with inside of organizations, it doesn't matter what organization it is, they always want to make a difference. They think there's yeah. got to be a better way. That's why they have us come in. Yeah. And they're really working in food and transportation and government and uh, in you know agriculture or whatever the you know thing might be, piping and city building, because they really want to make a difference. And that's exciting. So how can they create new organizational models, new governmental models, new social models that take humanity uh, well beyond the 20th century into our 21st century and 22nd century. Uh, we're almost halfway through this century already. I know. So let's talk about new governmental models and remind you that your opportunity to co-create the future of democracy is happening soon. August 22nd through the 24th. I don't remember when applications close. I'm sure Angela can drop that in the chat. But if you are called to join us. I, I hope that you do. Um, this is going to be a very, very special three days. Um, again, August 22nd, 23rd, and 24th Mountain uh, Daylight Time um, across those three days where we will chart a new path for democracy. You'll be working alongside some of the nations and uh it's actually a, a global cohort we've yes. got folks from latin america and from canada already signed up to join us um working alongside these brilliant folks to really really think differently about how we govern and use foresight tools to do that so we are super super excited about these three days um again i feel like it aligns really well with uh, the topic of today's live stream and i hope that you all uh, are able to join us um, for this very, very special foundations program. I'm not going to tease what the focal issue will be in October, but <laughs> if you are, if you are far outside the U S, um, you are in, you know, Asia or in Europe, the October program will be, um, placed across six half days. So much more easier to attend, easier yeah. to attend for different time zones. Um, but, and I'm not going to tell you what the issue is for that one, but it's also a really good one. Mm. Also a really good mm. one. So, but we're going to focus in on August. August 2nd is the deadline, according to Angela, and she's the one that knows. So thank you all for joining. If you're watching on the recording, uh, shout out to you. And, uh, until the next recording, which may happen today, may, may, hopefully. It should. I mean, I have my hair and makeup done, so it really, That's it really, a perfect time for it, it really should. You'll just watch this uh, podcast if you were, t if you're taking a course or something yeah, and seeing a yeah. recording and uh, true, see though. us dressed exactly the same way. So. <laughs> they won't care. Trust me. They won't Send remember. me an email. Anyway. All right. You all, you all, you all have a great rest of your day. Go save democracy or something. And uh, we'll Libraries. talk. Libraries. Also, li save your local library. Save the libraries as Support well. Support your local library. All right, bye, friends. Bye.